right, hi. Um, I don't know if this video is gonna go up or not, but it's um, me showing my paperwork, kind of like a, a backup thing. So I'm a little bit late, obviously. A lot of people, you know, take coffee to wake up in the morning. It takes me like a couple hours for my brain to just catch up. It's 11 o'clock. I need to go to the George Mont ER because obviously the city hospital is the problem with my paperwork it's here to try to get um, a cardiologist to look at things because again this paperwork says that since 2015 I need a pacemaker so this is I last night scanned everything in case they want to keep these papers um, and I also organized everything so it would be a lot easier so these this stack so I got a, a huge stack and by the way I am missing papers I asked for my whole file and there's papers missing um, again one I have the transaction in my bank account that I paid a cab that day and there's no corresponding anything but these are all the papers of me walking out because they weren't taking me seriously but I've got everything coded some of them are just, you know, they don't have, there's just like one page, like where's the rest? Some of them, well, this particular one is December 21st, but there's no year. There's no other paper that goes with it either. Um, December 25th, like December 21st, there's been a lot of those, by the way. You know, we're 2018. Which year? No clue. Don't know. Um, but yeah, that those are all of me walking out because they weren't taking me seriously. And I, I can actually prove from some of these things that they weren't taking me seriously because they've tried to kind of obfuscate their, their notes from the triage people about why they think I'm lying. And it literally says that they think I'm lying because I drove myself there in my own car. Uh, yeah, I drove myself there in my own car even though I had hurt issues which again they weren't believing me for um because i knew if well, either i had no way of getting there so my point um this is my stack of paperwork from 2014. everything on this side are test results test results that i never got i've never been informed of i only know the test results now which is why i have to go to the hospital now to try to get help anyway Everything is color coded again. I have these teeny wee little things. Yes, I, I actually am organized. And it's kind of sad that, you know, I'm on disability for mental illness and all that not. Yes, I am okay, but there's there's no advocates. Nobody's helping me with this. Um, my aunt, who is almost across the country, is the only person that's, you know, giving me some, some input, like a background health records from the whole family. Um, we're not going to go into more details about that. But, yeah, so these are all the ones. Everything with a purple are times where the doctors have left a part where there's a follow-up needed and no follow-up ever happened. These things that sideways are actual test results from things that happen. So in 2014... Um, those test results were from the fact that I lost my voice for a long time and I needed voice therapy. And by the way, that is stress. And then we're going to move over, that was a lot, to 2015, which is the very important one. I know, the, the lights and the stuff because it's super sunny. Um, so these are the times I've been there. And the green tab, that means there's parts missing. There's There's one page. I don't have the rest of the record for that day. Again, I didn't get my full record and I'm supposed to. And um, again, to get them held accountable, I've tried, I've called Dolby. Apparently you can't. Um, there's a law firm that I've contacted and they're, they're like, you know, we can't take your case. So maybe this video is for them. Because I understand that the principal is saying that I'm mentally ill and they're discriminating against me because I'm mentally ill. And Human Rights Commission came back and said, what you have is too big of a scope for what we can do. You need an actual lawyer. And I understand that they might not want to go on there because, you know, it's a mentally ill person's, okay, view against whatever. But I can prove here. 
not the point. This is what I need to look about today. Um, these tabs, again, are from test results. And then all of this stuff is what I can talk about. It has the Halter monitor test that I asked my family doctor for the results for for many, many times. And the results, again, if it wasn't for the fact that I had a picture of myself hooked up to it, I, he would have convinced me that it never happened. Now, whether he looked for them or not, I don't know. But he told me they weren't there. However, his name is clearly on there. And the, the thing is that this is dated July 24th, 2015. And 90% of the recording is spent in brachycardia. And it was a rhythm varying from 39 beats per minute. 90% of the time, my heart beats too slow. Yes, that's why I need a pacemaker. And it says that there's a follow-up needed. It never happened. And then I actually have the ECGs. Two of them are from when I was actually being observed in the emergency. Now, this isn't the, that's not actually those doctors' faults. They sent these results to my family doctor and nothing ever happened from there. So who's responsible? I don't know. And then there's all the blood tests from them. And those also show the other part where my kidneys were failing. Remember, I went back in November, December all that kind of whatnot and um so but the main thing i need to go today is to get a card so i need to go during the day i need to get there but again i'm doing this video to cover my butt i think i should i don't know i don't know the rules but i'm trying okay i need to go because there's probably a call with cardi a cardiologist you know on call and maybe they'll get somewhere that's 2015. so 2014 2015 Again, none of these things were ever reported. I never got answers. Uh, these are 2016s, so these are the answer. And this is one of the ones where um, I can kind of prove that they don't believe me. Because one of these days, I, um, I dropped the toilet tank on my foot. I thought I broke it, okay? It really was. And... Um, that day when I was at the triage, now it's not written in there, but I remember. The person asked me because I was, a, again, at the Moncton City Hospital because it's closer to my house. It's a 5 to $6 cab ride to the Moncton City Hospital and it's about a 20 16 to $20 depending on who's driving to the George Dumont. I don't have that kind of money. Um, the person asked me, you know, I'm there for my foot, all right? I think my foot might be broken. I have the x-ray results. You know, that the doctor actually took me seriously. He looked. It, it, the triage nurse asked me, who's your psychiatrist? Now, I didn't think. I answered, you know. And she says, is he at the Dumont? And I was like, yeah. And her answer was, why don't you go there? That, I mean, I already knew they were discriminating against, you know, because they see my meds list and they think I'm mentally ill and making things up. But that right there is an inappropriate comment. I'm here because I think I broke my foot. That's nothing to do with the fact that I may or may not be mentally there or not. First of all, you know, you're a triage person. You should be able to tell if someone is, you know, whatever. That's another thing for another day. But that's just to prove, yes. Don't ask me why I didn't go to the Dumont because my psychiatrist is there. When I'm talking about the fact that I think I broke my foot. Sorry, I'm a little mad. Now, this is why I'm saying a lot of things is missing. This is all I have from 2017. That's it. There is no way that I have this many from 16, this many from 15, and this many from 14, when I exclusively only go to that particular one because I can't afford to get to the other one, and I only have two visits in November for 2017. But again, another story for another day because I do think it should be investigated. If it's going to happen or not, I have no idea. But the only thing that is this is the times that I went in um, before I actually got to the point where, you know, I got to the Dumont and they realized the kidneys were failing and all this kind of whatnot. So I, I have um, results of, of things. And I also have um, the notes from 
the triage nurse that again, um, well, we'll get into that later where I kept going back and telling him that you haven't triaged me correctly. He told me I was wasting his time and I can read here that, you know, he's, he's not listening to me because it says that I was there for coughing. No, I wasn't there for coughing. I was there because I couldn't breathe and the coughing was a side effect of me not being able to breathe. And uh, it, it says here, mental health, whatever. Anyway, and I went back a few times and I mean, I knew, I did quite know that the reason why was my esophagus problem, but I mean, I knew I had it and I, I have a hard time saying it because, okay, let me try it. Esophilic esophagitis, maybe, I think, I don't know. So I have a hard time saying it. So I pulled it up on my, my phone and I went up to him and I'm like, look, I have this. And I'm not kidding. He looked at me and said, says who? And my answer, you know, was my doctor. Because I've been diagnosed with this for at least two years by a very recommended, reputable gastroenterologist here in Moncton. He's one, actually one of the best I learned later on. But his answer was, says who? What do you mean, says who? Whatever. But then when he comes to the results part where... The doctor actually looked at me nine hours later. Um, it, it says exactly what I said. and But it has like a question mark that do I have that or not. I just told you I did. And then it says a bunch of stuff about, you know, referrals that I have never gotten. I called. I never got them. And, um, and then this is me going the, the next time, which is the day that um, I, I left. So... I went in at 11.32 in the morning and talked about the, what I was going on. And it says, told had swollen esophagus. I'm not lying about stuff, you know. And then it does say that I was in distress because, yeah, I, I got mad. And um, this is the last page because that's when uh, my friend, you know, was... I'm talking and she's like, look, I got the time on pick you up. I'm bringing to the Dumont. Um, by the time that they wrote in here that they, they were looking for me and I didn't answer the call to see the doctor, um, that particular time I had already been at the Dumont and was being treated. So that's that. that that's my, my whole thing on that. So today I, I'm going to deal with... At least in my heart, because I, I I spend many, many years wanting to die. Because, you know, I have a mental illness, life wasn't good. Now, finally, things are looking up, and I'm afraid to. So, my whole point of that is that study that they, they did with people who commit suicide and... Well, the study they did with people who try to commit suicide and but survive, 99.99% .99 of them all said that the moment they jumped, they regretted it. And I'm living proof of that. My whole life, I was like, look, just let me die. Just, just give me cancer. Give me something so I can just get out of this life. And now that I'm looking at these results, seeing that, like, I could die, I'm, I'm fighting for my life. Um, also, I feel a lot better. So, anyway. But these are the reports just from the Dumont. From them helping me. And this is just two visits. So, I'm off to do that. All right. I apologize for the lighting. Um, if I open all the curtains, it's super hot in here. Again, air conditioning don't come with this place, but we're living with what we got. So this is the second part to, you know, me telling you that I was going to the hospital yesterday. And I had a video that I filmed like when I first got up this morning and then I scrapped it because I'm feeling a little bit better. So, yes, I stopped taking that medication like you told me to. Or the doctor highly suggested. It's still my choice. And so I called the pharmacy to, to after a while, you know, like, is this normal? And she wasn't too certain. I mean, she was pretty much, yes, it's normal to have, you know, these effects. But my blood pressure also has to be considered a factor to figure out if this is normal or not and I have no way of getting to a, a blood pressure thing like the ones in the pharmacies that my arms don't fit and too fat 
Anyway, even in that, I'm still like really, really dizzy. So when I woke up, I was so dizzy, I couldn't walk in a straight line. I thought I was on a boat. That's slowly been going away as I wake up. So now I'm a lot more cohesive. Like the first video, I sounded like I was high. I couldn't talk. Um, but I am a little bit concerned, so I, I am going to bring a few things up now. If there's anybody out there that's from the medical community that, that knows the answers, like, please help. Um, so before, like, you know, these, this is my heart rate that I had before. Before I went to the hospital, right? It was always really, really low. That's why I, I was concerned. And, <clears throat> again, the doctor yesterday... I mean, he was somewhat concerned about a lot of things, but again, he's an emergency room doctor, and I didn't, emergency, you know, need something. I need a family doctor. We're, we're waiting for that, because there's a lot of things, and they probably all have to do with each other, right? I mean, your body's designed to work with everything else. One organ doesn't work perfectly. Everything else, you know, kind of has to work harder. Um, this was my heart trace the night before I went to the hospital. Now this is last night. Again, <clears throat> apparently this is probably normal for someone who's who stopped taking this medicine. But it's very different now, isn't it? And I, I was a little bit freaked out, but as I was editing the video of yesterday, the first part to um I started feeling better and so I'm going to go with, I'm okay, this is just the side effects of stopping that. But just to interpret last night's thing, um, for about an hour and a half while I was sleeping, so between 3.02 a.m. and about 3, or sorry, about 4.49 maybe, a.m., my heart did a bunch of yo-yos. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, I, again, the pharmacist did say that that is a big possibility when you stop taking, you know, this kind of heart medication that was on. Uh, your body needs to adjust. And, you know, she gave me the parameters of where the danger zones are. And I haven't hit the danger zones. And again, now I'm not as dizzy and I'm feeling a lot better. So I'm going to go with that it was just side effects of I'll keep monitoring it, but but for about a 12-minute period, though, my heart freaked out. It went from 54 beats a minute all the way up to 103, all the way back down to 55 in about 12 minutes while I was asleep. So maybe I was dreaming. I, mean, I don't know. That's never happened before. However, like I said, um, it's very possible that for the most part, I guess, all right, so this is, again, the part where everything kind of decided to go crazy. But I'm going to go with um, the whole, it's just me getting used to not taking it anymore. So I think I'm going to be okay um, to the rest of my day. There, <clears throat> For those interested, there's going to be another thing because I've, I've gotten mail and there's a few new things on there, actually. But um, either way, thank you for the concern. Thank you for everybody that's there for me. And if anybody out there um, does know things about, you know, medical stuff, because you happen to be working in that, and you have any kind of comment, either it's normal, you're going to be okay, or not, or whatever, please let me know. I mean, I, I appreciate it. Other than that, thanks, and um, have a great day.